Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at Reliquary of Souls inside the Black Temple, easily the coolest looking boss inside of all of Tier 6. This is a three phase encounter where each phase of the boss is actually a different face, and each face represents a different emotion, suffering, desire, and lastly anger. Each of those has their own aura that debuffs the entire raid, as well as their own mechanics. While not the most difficult fight in the raid, it's definitely one that can slip away from you if you don't pay attention, so let's get right into it. Before we start, please note that this footage, as well as all the damage values and mechanics are from the PTR. Blizzard has since stated that they will not be tuning the raid, so we should be safe to expect the encounter to work relatively the same. If for some reason Blizzard does in fact tune any of the encounters, I will make an updated guide for that boss immediately. I know some of you guys prefer a written form of this guide, and for those, there's a link to the Google Doc in the description. But just a warning, it's just an exact script from what I'm reading right now. Lastly, before we begin, I stream five days a week over on Twitch in the Guild Insidious on the server Feralina. Feel free to stop by whenever if you have any questions or just want to hang out and meet some new friends. We really are a family over there and we love TBC. You can find us over at twitch.tv slash crixgaming. And lastly, if you wouldn't mind clicking that red subscribe button so it turns gray, that would be dope. Thanks. Okay, okay, let's get into this. First off, let's talk about raid comp. I suggest two tanks, one prot warrior, and it doesn't matter about the off tank. It's not bad if you bring a second off tank for safety, just to make sure you guys can get past the aggro dance in phase one. As for healers, I suggest you bring six healers. What mix of healers you bring is completely up to you. However, I prefer one holy paladin, one resto dude, two resto shamans, a circle of healing priest, and a six healer can either be a resto shaman or another priest. Fill in the rest with your pumper DPS. All right, on to the encounter. Well, actually, even before the fight is the gauntlet. Your raid must run down this corridor as you see here and run to the boss while dealing with these adds, which seem to be on about a 20 to 30 second respawn timer, meaning your raid needs to kill them and move fast. Luckily for you, the mobs aren't too difficult to deal with. Just run on through, let your tank gather some threat and AOE them down. Shamans, make sure to watch your totems because they can aggro the respawns. In the past, we weren't able to drop combat and the boss would initiate combat roughly 30 seconds after the first person touched the top of the ramp. However, after trying different ways to get around this, we were able to find out that as long as you're all at the top like this, you get a brief time out of combat before the adds respawn on you. If this remains as so, run to this point, nuke down the adds, then sit and get whatever mana you lost back and let's get this boss started. So the Reliquary of Souls manifests three different essences over the course of the encounter, each of which applies a very unique debuff to the raid that forces you to handle the raid differently. We'll go over each of them when we get to the phases, but for now, let's begin with phase one. Aura of Suffering, which reduces everyone's healing, regeneration, and armor by 100%. Meaning absolutely no healing can be done in this phase. By no healing, I mean you will not gain any health. Not from bandages, not from hellstones, nothing. Side note though, Power Road Shield still works along with Pain Suppression and Blessing of Sacrifice. You shouldn't really need the latter of the two during this phase, but you should definitely have your priest still be Power Road Shielding up on the tanks. Healers, save your cooldowns for the later phases since those are more healing intensive. During phase one, the only thing you need to look out for is Soul Drain, which needs to be dispelled immediately, as this ability does a good bit of damage, as well as drains your mana and will continue to do so until you've dispelled it. This is the only damage going out to the raid, so dispel this fast. Other than that, just have your healers DPS since they can't heal. It will help you get to the phase much faster. Plus, you'd be surprised at how much damage healers can do if they really just full blast with no worries about healing. Oh, and don't worry about mana either, because in between each phase, there's a short intermission where these enslaved demon things come out, and upon death, they restore 30% of your health and mana each. And there's a ton of them. So everyone will be back to full health and mana going into each phase. Hold nothing back and do as much damage as you can. As for the tanks, this fight acts a little different since there's no threat in this phase. And because of that, simply whoever is closest to the boss has the aggro. Have one tank move in slowly while the other one slowly moves out to tank swap when needed. You should tank swap as much as possible to fully utilize fresh power word shields. Next, roughly every 45 to 50 seconds, there's an enrage on the boss that increases the physical damage dealt by 25% and the attack speed by 50%. We had our tank TSW. I'll link his card right above us right now where he has VODs from the main tank in raid leader perspective. We had him wear high avoidance and some personal trinkets and he personally didn't have any issues tanking the enrage hits. However, if you're having troubles with this or just want to play it safe, you can have a rogue pop evasion and tank it. As for the range DPS, as said earlier, there is no threat you need to worry about during this phase. Pop your CDs and do as much damage as you can. As for you melee DPS, do the same thing, but it's important that you are at max melee range. Otherwise, you can get too close to the boss and take the aggro. Here's the intermission I was talking about earlier. At 1%, she runs back to her cage, resets the threat, and a bunch of tortured and saved soul come out and, well, die again, I guess, giving you 30% health and mana.
Now, phase two's auras is the aura of desire, which increases your healing done by 100%, but also reflects 50% of the damage you deal back to yourself, as well as reduces your maximum mana by 5% every eight seconds. Meaning after a little over two and a half minutes, you'll have zero mana. As you can tell, this phase is a little more hectic. It's all about the spell steals, interrupts, and some intensive healing as the raid does 50% of the damage they do back to themselves. Yeah, Warlocks, those 10k Shadow Bolt crits will be hitting you for 5k. Not only that, but you better watch out for your Doom Ticks or you'll be asking for a Battle Res real soon. Another new mechanic in Phase 2 is Spirit Shock, which will absolutely slam the tank for about 10k damage and then blind them for 5 seconds. An interrupt rotation must be assigned because if this ability goes off, your tank is likely to die. You need a two-person interrupt rotation or just one rogue with their PvP gloves and he can handle the Spirit Shock. Note that it is a one second cast time, so have one Warlock keep up a Curse of Tongues. Another new ability is Deaden, which increases the damage taken by the target by 100% for 10 seconds. It is important that you do not interrupt this. Instead, this should be spell reflected by your warrior so the boss can take double damage. During the following 10 seconds is when the raid will take the most damage during this phase since they're all dealing twice as much damage to the boss, thus reflecting twice as much damage to themselves. Healers use cooldowns here if needed and heal proactively rather than reactively. For this example, you know that Warlocks will be taking the most damage during Dead End because of their Shadow Bolts. So before Dead End goes off, already have Bubbles and Renews and stuff on them or whoever else you know is that's about to take a lot of damage. This phase is very healing intensive and the healers will have their hands full. So DPS needs to be nice to the healers. Don't be fucking mongoloids and please be careful not to kill yourself. Lastly in this phase is Rune Shield, which buffs the boss with 100% attack and cast speed as well as puts a huge 100k damage absorption shield on herself and becomes immune to spell interrupts. As annoying as that just sounded, simply just have your mage spell steal it and you'll never have to worry about it. But mages need to be fast with the spell steal though, otherwise the spirit shot can go out and you won't be able to interrupt the spirit shot because the rune shield is still up. After a brief intermission, set those enslaved souls free, get your health and mana back, and phase through again. Phase 3's aura is the aura of anger, which increases damage dealt by players, but also deals raid-wide shadow damage over time, and both of those effects ramp up over time even more. The raid-wide shadow damage will increase by about 100 every 3 seconds, and with each tick, your raid's damage will also increase by 5%. You can see how this phase can get hectic, and you need to get the boss down fast as it acts as a soft enrage. For this reason, you want to save lust for Phase 3. Phase 3 is all about threat and not over aggroing because every time the boss changes target, she puts a raid wide debuff that will increase everyone's threat by 200%. And this will happen if you taunt as well. Because of this, how you start this phase is very important. To start, have everybody in your raid hold DPS for about 10 seconds. When the phase begins, have your off tank run in and start on the boss. Then after a couple globals, have your main tank taunt the boss. Now everyone in the raid will have the 200% increased threat debuff. So it's crucial that nobody's hitting the boss but the main tank. This ensures that not only is it just your main tank building your threat, but he's also building 200% more threat. Once the debuff wears off, blow all your lust, pop your cooldowns, and finish the boss while of course watching your threat. Another mechanic to worry about is Soul Scream, which hits every single person in front of the boss in a cone for about 3.5k damage. Just make sure everyone besides the tank is behind the boss. Something interesting about Soul Scream is that it does more damage the more of your power resource you have. So the more rage your warrior has, the more damage Soul Scream is going to do. For this reason, have your main tank stand stance to drop his rage, or if you're using a bear, you can power shift and prop pallies can also dump their mana pretty easy too. The last mechanic is Spite, which will put a debuff on a random player and make them immune to all damage for 6 seconds and then take about 7 to 8k damage. Healers must quickly top off whoever gets Spite before Spite hits and after Spite goes off. As for the healers, it's suggested to put a couple healers on the main tank and the rest on the raid. At first, the healing won't be too much since the aura damage is on a lower scale to the point where you guys should be DPSing until healing is actually needed. However, as the fight progresses, the raid damage will start significantly ramping up, saving any healing cooldowns you have for the back half of this phase. As for the DPS, both melee and ranged, your job is to do as much damage as you can while not pulling threat and also staying behind the boss at all times. If you get spite, pop a health stone or a health potion before it goes off. All right, guys, that's it for this one. 
I hope I'm not missing anything or getting anything wrong. If I do, let me know in the comments and we'll fix it, okay? More importantly, I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed this and that it helps you prepare for an overall amazing raid tier. Please like the video if you liked it and think about subscribing to the channel while you're there. Good luck, everyone. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.